Eight years ago, on the Feast of St. Peter, the 29th of June, the choir and clergy of Westminster Abbey were in Rome, preparing to celebrate a service of choral evensong in one of the great basilicas of that city. We were to sing the evening office of the Feast of St. Peter in the Church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, the archetypically Anglican service near the heart of Roman Catholicism. We were there at the invitation of its titular parish priest, Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor, who was then, of course, Archbishop Emeritus of Westminster. This occasion was the last in a series of remarkable events in Rome that weekend, in which the choir and clergy of Westminster Abbey had taken part, including a concert in another Roman basilica, Santa Maria Maggiore, and a recital in the Vatican Sistine Chapel. Then on the feast itself of St. Peter, quite early in the morning, We were in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, awaiting the beginning of a solemn mass to be celebrated by Pope Benedict XVI. This was St. Peter's Day in St. Peter's Basilica, built over the place of St. Peter's burial at a service presided over by the successor of St. Peter. The choir of Westminster Abbey was to sing the service with the Pope's own choir, and the clergy of Westminster Abbey were to have a prominent place in the congregation. Westminster Abbey, this archetypically Anglican community, had a place on this occasion at the heart of Roman Catholicism. These were moments without precedent. Anglican choirs have sung in Rome, but now for the first time a choir would sing at a papal liturgy alongside the Sistine Chapel choir the two choirs forming one choir, Anglican and Roman Catholic, together. And the invitation, which was from the Pope himself, was one of the fruits of his visit to Great Britain ten years ago this year. When the Pope joined us in the Abbey on the 17th of September 2010 for an ecumenical service of evening prayer, I was struck by the irony that 450 years after the split with Rome, Benedict XVI was the first ever Pope to visit Westminster Abbey, a church dedicated to St. Peter, which for 600 years, as a Benedictine Abbey, had enjoyed a close relationship of mutual support with the papacy. The events I'm describing constituted a genuine ecumenical exchange. The Pope in the Abbey reminding the people of England of our rich Christian heritage. The Abbey Choir in Rome contributing to the worship from the English choral tradition. So what happened then was that the choir and clergy of Westminster took the Abbey on a return pilgrimage to Rome to pray before the tomb of St. Peter, the Apostle and Martyr, our patron saint. Our presence and our prayer likewise implored the gift of Christian unity. For several of those who heard us in Rome, one moment stood out at the Papal Mass when the Abbey Choir sang William Byrd's motet Ave Verum Corpus, addressed to our Lord Jesus Christ, present in the Blessed Sacrament. Hail, true body, born of Mary. Monsignor Mark Langham, then working in Rome, wrote to me afterwards to say, For English Roman Catholics, Bird's Ave Verum is an iconic work that summons up the whole recusant experience. To hear it sung by Westminster Abbey Choir at Papal Mass was a massive reconfiguration of experience, not denying personal history, but putting it into a far larger context and bringing an inexpressible sense of joy and hope. Events can create a fresh perspective on history. Divisions are hard to heal. Broken bodies take time to mend. Kept apart, they grow apart. And the the divergences between Rome and Canterbury are as significant in our own day as the unhealed memories, the 450 years of history apart. There is much that divides the Church of England, the Anglican Communion, from the Roman Catholic Church. And yet there is so much we hold in common. So much we've always held together. 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, and of course so much more. In God's good time, and by God's grace, the effect of our joint pilgrimage, our journeying together, above all of our own closer walking with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ in the company of the saints and angels, will be a fuller sharing, a Eucharistic communion between our churches. Not uniformity, but unity in diversity, when the world will truly see how these Christians love one another.